Yesterday was yet another busy day for Brian Jean, who announced several policies, most good, some bad, but the bad kind of outweighing the good in a way which I'll explain in a bit. Now this policy announcement came directly after his official declaration to jump into the leadership race for the new United Conservative Party of Alberta on Monday. It's pretty clear he's getting ahead of the game, which is probably a pretty smart move, especially if we see a race like the federal Conservatives had, where there were just too many candidates and not enough to like, and it almost made you want to close your eyes and not watch anymore. In that case, the first few to come out swinging are usually the most remembered amongst the crowd. Now, onto these policy decisions. Here's the good. I have to say that most of these policies are pretty decent, because they're heavily focused on fiscals, bringing investment back into the province, and getting rid of the enormous debt the NDP racked up on the taxpayer credit card within three years. Highlights are that there will be no PST, he'll repeal the carbon tax and not least cap on oil sands emissions, and he's suggesting a lot of great policies to create a friendly business environment. Jean would like to drop the corporate tax back down to 10% from 12, he wants to cut taxes for small businesses in half to 1% and says that personal taxes will be reduced once the budget is balanced. It's also great that he's looking at cutting government red tape. We've seen this plague the oil and gas industry by holding up projects and this would be a move that would save almost 300 million bucks from the get-go. By the way, he also alluded to using more natural gas to cut emissions, which is also a big thumbs up. Obviously, Jean gets that it shouldn't be the government creating jobs by hiring public servants, but that it's private companies that benefit from good policy that do. So all of these policies should spur the economy and create those jobs in the private sector that are desperately needed in the province. Now, here's what's not to like, and this is a major flaw that I think we're going to see in a lot of these campaigns, simply because politicians are way too dependent on the union vote. Rachel Notley expanded the public sector immediately because she knows if she gives the public service what they want, she'll win more votes. Now, Jean is taking the lead from the Wild Rose's most recent budget recommendations that outline $2.6 billion in operational savings, including the carbon tax, which accounts for the majority of those cuts at about $1.2 billion. And remember when he said he was going to end positions in the public sector through attrition? Well, that only accounts for $312 million, not a lot. He did say he'd like to reduce the number of managers across Alberta Health Services, but no solid numbers on that yet. What's more is that Gene wants to keep the child tax credit, and if he's keeping the working families credit, those two things combined are running the current government $336 million. There goes those savings in attrition he was talking about and then some. It appears Gene is viewing all of this as a double-edged sword. He's creating favorable business policies which will create jobs outside of the public sector and maybe even reduce the power of unions ever so slightly. But he also seems to think he needs the union vote, so he's not being bold about public sector cuts, which will need to happen. If his plan is to wean the unions of power over time, then he's not saying it. But let's get real here. We'll have a $71 billion debt to pay by the time the NDP is through with us, and we'll need to stop wasting money to pay that off. And the way to do it is to rework the biggest line items. Education and healthcare account for 65% of the budget, which is outrageous. So someone needs to kill two birds with one stone here. Fire union employees that control elections and reduce spending by doing just that. Look, you can't say you're the next Ralph Klein if you're too scared to make cuts to our dysfunctional healthcare system because you need union votes to win a leadership race. If getting those votes is that big of a problem, then the problem is the out of control growth of unions, which by the way, Brian Jean seems to be cozying up to, so how is that any different from the PCs of the past or even the NDP? And if that's what he's doing, the damage from pretending to be progressive will be far greater than what will come out of calling a few unions out and letting them know their time is up. You want to follow in the footsteps of Ralph Klein? 
then forget about being unprincipled and pandering to unions and do something to inspire the 47% of Albertans that didn't bother to vote in the last election because nobody gave them a reason to. For the Rebel.media, I'm Holly Nicholas. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to hit the subscribe button to our Rebel Canada YouTube channel so that you don't miss any of the latest that you're just not going to find anywhere else.